Hey, Bruce Sheep. So, uh, cheers. So it's Friday, and um, last video I posted, I mentioned that um, I was going to do a brew video or some brew clips uh, from last weekend's brew day. Well, that didn't quite happen. The uh, weekend got away from me, and uh, you know, it's one of them things. So I'm going to be doing my brew. This weekend, um, I've not decided if it's going to be Saturday or Sunday yet, but um, thought I'll do a little intro bit, tell you what I'm going to be brewing today, uh, that way I don't forget when I uh, get into it on on Saturday or Sunday. So, um, <clears throat> thought I'd tell you what I'm going to be brewing. So I'm going to be uh, brewing out of the uh, Homebrew Bible. Um, the single hop East Kent Golding Ale. Um, yep, so it's quite a simple, simple recipe. Nothing too complicated. Mostly pale malt um, with a little bit of currant peels, followed by um, a ton of uh, East Kent Goldings. So uh, it's a case of um, nice and simple. Should be quite nice, crisp. Um, I've got to decide whether or not I'm going to be doing a half tap, half distilled water yet. Um, try and get that extra crispness. I don't, don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, it's a case of today. Um, well, this is during my lunch at the moment. So um, I kind of snuck off to do a little bit of cleaning in the brewery. Kind of just, uh, just done my wort chiller. Uh, giving that a good scrub down because it's been probably a few months since I've used it and that uh, gathered quite a bit of dust and uh, and grime. So yeah, giving that a good clean. Um, as always, I think people always experience a few problems uh, when they go back to their brewery. And I, I noticed uh, today that um, <clears throat> one of the threads on my solar pump um, has busted a bit, so it's not getting a uh, clean threading when uh, we're adding the connector. Luckily I've got a spare, so um, what I'll be doing is kind of setting that up um, and getting that sorted. Alright, so it's Sunday, um, a lot later in the day than I wanted and I'm still not quite up to, to uh, attempts with my mash in. Um, it's one of them things, so uh, looks like I won't be finishing until about five o'clock today. So, properly in the dark, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But as I say, not quite up to temps yet, so take this opportunity to show you guys around the garage. So, as I say, this is uh, my garage. So, uh, obviously, it's got my tools and bits and pieces. I've got some remainder of a few beers left there from the last batch. Uh, got some PVC and copper tubing. If you can guess what I'm going to be making out of that, well, you've probably seen plenty of brew tube videos already. Uh, got plenty of rope, always good to have rope. And uh, this is my workbench, you know, and yep. So that there is the plan for my uh, control panel. So it's okay, I say plan. Look, that, that's kind of cute. Uh, nice little bit there. Obviously, uh, just having little things about control panels at the moment. I am running an electric uh, brewery, but at the moment it's a manual electric rather than automated. These are all my demijohns, taking up far too much room, really. Um, so over here, actually into the brewery section, is my three vessel uh, setup. Um, yeah, not much to say. As I say, I don't have my control panel set up at the moment so I'm doing everything manually um, running a single I think 2.2 kilowatt elements uh, straight off of the mains well off of the standard plugs um, yeah you'll notice that uh, my pumps are a little bit in disarray normally there being some little holders that I've got set up but uh, yeah not today, not today, I've uh, had a few issues. Over in the corner here, I've got my fermentation fridge. Um, in this case, it also doubles up as a serving 
fridge um, at the moment um, that doesn't work at all at the moment um, it's a case of I uh, don't know if it's a dodgy faucet but uh, yeah always leaks I've had a good few goes at trying to get it sorted and over here is just a few bits of my setup I know one of the things that people are going to probably think is uh, it's a bit of a mess in here and it is um, it's a case of I've been planning on getting this sorted for a while but uh, other things and responsibilities have been kind of getting in the way um, but I've got a few plans for, for the garage it's a case of I think first thing I'm going to be doing is actually so I've got a nice little sink in here but I'm going to change that like magic uh, change that over bring sink over here so I can get water better running into my, my kettles um, yeah so once I've got that there's also plans for effectively well one of the things I need to do is actually re-roof uh, the garage I had a little bit of an incident uh, a while ago where part of the roof actually caved in so uh, but yeah we'll see right so we've uh, just mashed in it's a case of uh, about it's just over 18 litres added to the grains um, I underlet um, followed by a good stir um, last two brews I still underlet but um, I didn't stir because for some reason I thought that you wasn't meant to um, but obviously reading more recently you should still stir and make sure that there's no uh, dough balls in there even though it, there's less of a chance but yeah a good good old stir and uh, it's a case of it's all looking good now it is just a uh, a race against time with regards to getting my mash out temp up in time for its addition so uh, I think I've got about 47 minutes uh, in between mash in and mash out um, I think it's only about seven liters that we're adding for the mash out um, and then obviously it's the uh, sparge after that but uh, yeah it's a case of got about 40 odd minutes to raise 30 degrees Oof, gonna be a tight one all right see how it goes and the wait is over so we have added the mash out um, did just about get to the temps in time um, wouldn't have really mattered if I'd uh, waited a little bit longer to to get get the temps if it had taken longer but uh, in the end I added, added a couple of uh, litres straight from the uh, kitchen kettle just to top up the heat in there but uh, yeah so we're just going there uh, dropping the sparge temp um, so that shouldn't, shouldn't be a, an issue um, smells great I, I love the smell personally um, but yeah always good let's uh, carry on and just so that you can have a little look see at what we got in there got lovely lovely brew going on bubbling away a little bit mm. right so um We've just done the, what's it called, sparge, yep, uh, just done the sparge, uh, a few issues, um, I don't know, it's a case of, I don't know if it's my pumps that just aren't getting good enough flow, or maybe my, my filter on my mash tun's still not good enough, although I'm pretty sure that has, I don't think that's the case, but uh, and a few issues. It's a case of really, I don't want to just keep on pumping water into the the mash tun to get enough volume through. It's a case of um, don't want to reduce the, the gravity too much. But uh, when it actually gets gets through to the uh, boil kettle, um, so yeah, I was meant to get about 32 liters into the boil kettle we got about 31 um, and it's because of that I've ended up about five points lower uh, on the gravity than I planned um, it's just one of them things um, and I say I think I mentioned earlier that I've got a few problems with my uh, with my, my pumps so um, yeah I don't know 
I'm not going to show you over there at the moment because it's a bit of a mess. I need to tidy it up. But, um, oh well, we'll see. Um, so yeah, it's a case of trying to get the kettle up to rolling boil. At the moment we're only at about 90 degrees, so we've got a little while yet. Um, yeah, see how that goes. All right, so we got ourselves a nice rolling boil. Uh, just added the first hop additions. Um, this is actually a 70 minute boil. Um, first hop addition uh, is 58 grams of East Kent Goldings. And in there nicely. Great stuff. All right, catch you in a bit. All right, so we've just completed the boil. Uh, just added the last of the hops. Um, so you know, let that uh, cool down for a sec, then start whirlpooling. Um, one of the things that I've kind of realised today is that I've really got to sort out a uh, little chimney or something like that. Um, the amount of condensation that I'm generating is just ridiculous. Um, normally I'll do things like maybe open the garage door and have uh, the steam kind of flow off that way, but even I think if I'd done that today, I've just realised how how bad it is i think it's not so bad in the summer maybe but in the winter yeah it's uh, a little bit much so i've got to go get that sorted all right i'll uh speak to you again when it's in the fermenter all right so we've just gone into the fermentation chamber um one point less than um i was after so i was after uh, 1053 and i ended up with 1052 um which I'm more than happy with considering the issues that I've had um, during the day. I think overall it's a, a good old good old sesh. And I think a, uh, another couple of beers are more than deserved. So yeah, it's a case of just got to tidy up everything now. And uh, yeah, we'll check in next weekend to see, uh, see how it's all going. Hi Bridget, so beer's been in the uh, fermentation fridge for just short of two weeks. Um, in the first week it dropped from 10.52 to 10.25. Um, in the second week it's only gone down to 10.22, so only another couple of points down. Um, kind of asked some questions on the old uh, Brewtube uh, Facebook pages and um, you know, as I say, I've only just started uh, doing old grain and really taking note of things properly. Um, but it's a case of one of the reasons why it may be that uh, it's not fermenting fully is that my strike temp or my mash temp might have been too high. And I've got rid of some of the fermentables, so, you know, just have to suck it up and, uh, you know, the beer's turned out as a... Uh, a session beer rather than a, uh, a non-driving beer. <laughs> Never drink and drive. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a case of a couple of other options that uh, have been suggested. A couple of people said, I'll you know, give it a gentle, spur, uh, gentle uh, stir. Might mean that uh, reactivating the yeast, raising the temperature in the fridge. Um, yeah, another person said, you know, rehydrate some additional yeast, get that going, stick that in there, see what happens. So, you know what, that's what I've done. It's a case of earlier on today. Um, and I've realised that actually with most of this video, I'm not showing you what I've done, just telling you about it after I've done it. But um, what I decided to do was uh, I had an extra pack of USO5. Um, I rehydrated that, added some yeast nutrients in there as well. Um, had that at about 20 degrees C and kind of just had that um, going for I don't know, a couple of hours maybe um, before adding it into the old uh, into the batch um, I've given it a gentle stir I've raised the temperature and you know what I kind of go if it does kind of pick up again and uh, you know drop the points down to you know finish out at say 10 10 or something or even if it went down to 10 15 you know that'd be great but if it stays where it is i'm not that fast it's okay um i'm gonna give it another week leave it as it is then after that it's a case of cold crashing 
then a um, little bit of gelatin in the keg um, kind of get that nice crystal clear look um, yeah we'll see how that goes all right so uh, we're just about to keg my beer a week later than than planned as I mentioned um, As I mentioned, um, the fermentation didn't go quite as quite as planned, um, ending up a little bit high. But you know what? I've had a had a wee taste on uh, on Friday when I started the cold crashing, and uh, you know what? Maybe a little bit sweet, but not bad. Not bad. It's a good 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 session beer still. Um, now I think it's going to going to be uh, really good once it's out of the keg. So uh, just going to siphon it through, and uh, yeah, we'll show you some of that. Right, so we've got the siphon all going nicely. Um, for sticking it into the keg, did purge the keg with CO2, so uh, no extra oxygen. What I've also done is uh, added a little bit of uh, the beer down the top piece just in case uh, the auto siphon struggles a little bit um, can sometimes pick up a bit of oxygen if the seals not good uh, no bubbles as of yet so uh, all seems to be good already dropped uh, a couple of litres so that's good Got the start of a nice snake going there. Always good. Got just, well, one gallon left with a couple litres, well, maybe one, one and a half litres of uh, yeast that we're trying to avoid. Whoa. Right, so uh, just poured myself a little sample. Um, nice little bit of head on there. Uh, obviously, it's still cloudy. It's only just gone in the keg, so I uh, give it a couple of days to settle. Then um, hopefully it'll it'll clear up. Uh, not that I mind uh, a, a cloudy beer. Um, in this case of yeah. Oh, right on the nose. No, it's a case of, it has got that classic uh, grassy kind of East Kent smell to it. It's a really good, really good uh, smell. I'm shit at describing this stuff. Yeah, you know what? Once that's been carved properly, that's going to be well, our class is a really good, really good pale. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. And um, as I mentioned earlier, because I'm taking um, the keg round to mum and dad's for Christmas, it's a case of uh, I'm not going to be taking the big CO2 tank. So uh, I'll share with you a little video of how I'm planning on... Um, just reading this bit, you know, sneaky little Christmas video coming up. <laughs> 